Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to Final Fantasy Tactics, War of the Lions. We've got another interlude to do. Uh, y yes, even more after that hour and a half uh, of the last one. Uh, the first thing that I want to do is here at the Poacher's Den, um, I want to actually set someone to have Poach. Uh, let's just set Luso to uh, his base job. That should count. Yep. Alright, so you have to have Poach equipped to get in. Um, some people say that uh, I got the stuff that I poached in the early part. I... I don't know. We'll see. I have three chantages available. That's just absolutely insane. Um, however, if we sell something, let's see what happens. What do we want to sell? Sell the Damask Cloth. So, one for uh, 3,500 gil. And now, Damask Cloth is there for 3,500 gil. So, you can sell things, and he'll store them, essentially. Um, and it's... You, you get the same money for it. So you don't make money doing this, uh, unless you leave it here. But you can sell things and then buy them back if you really need money. And, well, and I am going to need money. So, let's, uh, let's start with some things. I'm going to keep those. Uh, wizard's clothing. Well. Hmm. Actually, I could sell all three of these. And sell that. To a certain extent, I want to sell things that I can easily remember that I sold him and then get them back. If necessary. I need to get up to 500,000. Five hundred thousand. All right. So we don't have any uh, errands, but I do want to be able to come back here. Um, it's it should be okay. Fine, I'll go here. So, this is a device you'd mentioned? The same, unearthed just as digging began in tun Tunnel 57. I'd thought to disassemble it, but I haven't the slightest inkling of how to begin. An iron sphere. Curious. Oh god, it's gonna blow! What just happened? Was it reacting to the orosite? Hmm. This is a most peculiar symbol. I believe that was the Pisces. All right, so that will uh, um, set some things up later. It's a little little scene that we wanted to get right now. Uh, let's see. I don't think there's anything different to buy here. Well, we can buy mithril guns. That's about it. All right. Um... Okay, uh, I am not sure if I want to do this one yet, actually. I'm not sure if this is, a. Uh... 
gonna open up something that I need to be careful about. Um... Okay, uh, I don't think I'm supposed to have that yet. I'm not going to read that just yet. We're going to, we're going to hold off on that just to be on the safe side. That, that, I don't think that should be there yet, uh, based on my understanding of how the side quest operates, and I don't want that to break anything. So, we've got the Durga. And this is another salvage, so monks and knights are good. Uh, the other one is devil in the dark. Orators, white mages, and mimes are good for that one. So, well, I think we'll do that one first. And I'm only going to do one at a time at the moment. Uh, Eagle Claw, you get to be a white mage. Zappa gets to be a white mage. Ashley. Can't make you an orator. What would Mystics be for this? Not great. Alright, just make you a white mage. Okay. Errands, Devil in the Dark. Oh, that, eh? Here's the bill. Rumor has it that a monster has taken up residence in a long-abandoned well. It's making us dreadfully nervous. Please look into the matter. Goog resident. Finder sea supplies and other expenses come to 3,050 gil. That all right? That's okay. Eagle Claw, Zappa, and Ashley. Eh, maybe I should do orators. Um... Let me check something. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I actually do need, uh, Orator. And I think both of you can become Orators. Yep. Well, yeah, I mean, you were on, you were doing that before, so. I still can't believe no one else has unlocked Onion Knight, other than Ashley. Alright, uh, Aaron's Devil in the Dark. And Eagle Claw, Zappa, and Ashley. Go ahead and have ten days. Investigate the old well and solve the mystery. Ten days, okay. I'm not gonna do that one just yet. Um... Let's see. I'm actually going to go up here so that if I'm just moved between these two, I should guarantee that I end up being on um, the proper tile. And I don't accidentally end up being on the incorrect tile if it does trigger on Cancer 1. Which I think it does. I mean, obviously, if it, I can always just wait another year in the game, but I would rather not. Let's get Alicia and Lavian as uh, knights, just in case that matters.
Okay. One cancer. Yep, there we go. Hmm. Well, do you intend to give it to her or not? Give what? To whom? I... I've no idea what you... Mastadio. Alright, alright. Ah, Agrius, I, uh... I, I hope this is n not... not a bad time. Hmm? Is something the matter? N no, it's just... I... here. What's this? It's, uh, um, uh, a present. I, I heard today was your birthday, so I, uh, well... Today is my birthday, isn't it? I'd near forgotten. Who told you? Lavian? Alicia? Those two cannot still their tongues, can they? Um, anyway, I, uh, wanted to... to give you this. It... it isn't much. May I open it? Uh, y yes of course Lip Rouge? Yes, y you're always busy fighting and... and... Well, I, I know you probably small time for such womanly things, but... I, I thought, mayhap, y you might like to have that. I have small time, yes, but I chose this life for myself. It's not as though I regret it. Still, there are times... Are you sure it's all right for me to have this? Of course. Why do you ask? It cost a goodly amount, did it not? Surely a gift like this is wasted on a knight such as I. N no, not at all. Please accept it. Very well, then. Oh. Well? Do I look odd? N what? N no. You look wonderful. Truly, truly so. Thank you, Mustadio. I will treasure it as I do our friendship. Okay, so, um... I actually expected a little bit more from that. Uh, I've never seen that before. Um... It only triggers if you have 500,000 gil, and you do get most of that back, but I think it, it takes it and then you, you get it back kind of thing. Uh, in addition, you have to have Alicia and Lavian. I was kind of thinking that they would pop up into the, uh, um, into the scene, but they didn't. Uh, and of course you have to have Mustadio and Agrius. Uh, also, I'm sorry Mustadio, but... Uh, Uh, Alden uh, uh, Agrius, definitely an item. That's, that's been my head cannon since for the first time I played this game. Also, uh, Mulsiber the Behemoth, get out of here. It looks upset at being told to go home. Mayhap because it has no home to go to. I don't care. And... Iphis, the Choco... Didn't we already have you in the party? Get out of here! It seems to want to keep fighting with you. I don't care! Get out! So, uh, I, I, it doesn't actually tell you that you get the item, but you get an item. Tynar Rouge. Magic plus three. Magical Lip Rouge from the popular Fay Forge brand. It is a limited edition product, making it difficult for even the richest noblewomen to obtain. Attack plus three. Magic plus three. Boosts holy. Equip protect shell. Haste. Females only. It's a little overpowered. But it's so good. That said, I will probably give this to someone else. Sorry, Agrius. <laughs> um, Nancy could, could use the magic plus three more than you. Well, 
No, no, her her sword skills use physical. Um, and boosting holy also pretty nice. <laughs> Yeah, it's good. It's the only way to get it. Uh, well, maybe the uh, online component you can get it. I don't know, but... Now I need to get back to uh, Goog. Also, happy birthday, Agrius. I do wish that there was more stuff like that with the uh, the, the characters that, that join you. For the most part, once they join you, pff, that's it. They're they they just fight in the battles, and that's and they, there's never anything else. And it's uh, really kind of disappointing. I mean, it's a fairly minor thing of a good out of a good game, but still. All right, reports. Devil in the dark. Want to hear the report on that, eh? We departed Goog in high spirits. Our task, to investigate an old well. The stars were with us from the outset. Our foe was a worthy one. Nonetheless, we remained committed to our goal. Our investigation finally came to a close. Afterwards, we readied ourselves for the road. A large sack happened to catch our eye. We quickly examined the contents. It was a handsome reward in Gil. Our fortune could not have been greater. I pray all our missions meet with such success. Investigate the old well and solve the mystery. Bonus reward money. Reward of 10,915 gil. Eagle Claw and Zappa got 107 JP. Ashley got 102. Okay, so... Next up, the Durga. And this one, uh, monks and knights are good at. So, I will probably go with... Ashley. Yeah, level 6 monk is okay. I mean, she's level 5 knight already as well, so... Not that big of a deal. Most of my people have done pretty well on the... Well, Nancy is level 6 on Monk as well. Uh, you can be a knight then. How's that? And we'll send Alicia or Lavian along, I guess. The Durga, a trade ship, has sunk some 40 sectas into the Gulf of Karnan. The Durga was carrying a number of valuable items when it went down, and they must be recovered. Barnvel Imports. Supplies and other expenses come to 100 gil. That all right? That's all right. Uh, Ashley, Nancy, and... We'll send Alicia. 14 days. Okay. Let's go ahead and buy the things back that we sold. Take that. Now, money at this point is basically no object. Thing. All right, so that's been four days. I have how many more? Ten. Ugh.
Is that enough? Nope, need two more days. There we go. The Durga. We departed Goog in high spirits. Our task, to raise the Durga from the ocean floor. The stars were with us from the outset. Nests of Sahagan lay beneath the, the cloudy waters. Nonetheless, we remained committed to our goal. It was not long before the sea yielded up to us our bounty. There was ample cargo to be found within the ship's hold. One large chest stood out amongst all the others. Breaking it open, we peered within. Before us lay a treasure beyond compare. Our fortune could not have been greater. I pray all our missions meet with such success. Raise the Durga from the bottom of the Gulf of Karnan. A bonus of White Materia. Reward of 14,745 gil. Very nice. Ashley and Nancy got 143 job points. Alicia got 133. And uh, that is, uh, I believe, it. Let me, uh, let me zip through a list. Um, yep. Yep, all of these look like things that we've done. Yes. Yes, we have done them all. All right. Um, there are also uh, special random encounters with uh, like unique setups of uh, monsters on some of these. Um, I don't think I'll be recording them. I'm not. I'm probably not going to seek them out. I may look to see what they have, just see if there's anything that I really want to. I, I really care about, but I don't think I'm going to seek them out. So, um, yeah, just you know. Uh, let's take a look at artifacts. The four deity plate. A set of four small brooches, each crafted in the image of an eastern deity of direction. The intricate inlay of fine jewels suggests the collection once belonged to nobility. I don't think this is a, a Final Fantasy thing. Some of these items had little mini-games, uh, or sound adventures, I think are what they were called, or sound novels, or something like that, um, that didn't make it into either of the uh, US versions, so... Uh, I, that might have been one. Scarab Charm. An iridescent charm crafted in the shape of a beetle. It is favored among the common people as a bringer of good fortune. The Parade Helm. Designed for victory parades, this ceremonial helm favors flair over function. The myriad precious stones adorning the helm attest to the affluence of a once great nation. I don't think these are uh, specifically related to anything. Calco Brenna. First popular in regions where other forms of amusement were few, these dolls are now many a young girl's treasure. It is said their lifeless eyes harbor the souls of lost owners. Ha! <laughs> that's... that's horrible. <laughs> that's just horrible. Oh, man. White Materia. These stones, developed by the ancient Ceronians, are the result of experiments in storing knowledge within gems for later generations. They are said to enhance the abilities of the possessor. The Rat Tail. Long used among sorcerers as a magical reagent, this exquisite delicacy was once the catalyst for a full-scale war. It has an extremely potent flavor. You eat it? Ew. Yuck. Ugh. The Veil of Wii U. The momentous events described in this book, if true, hold the potential to rewrite the pages of history. It documents the life of a woman now all but forgotten. Uh, yeah, I can't, I can't place her in any of the Final Fantasy games offhand. Zanmato. The indecipherable script engraved into this enchanted blade identifies it as the weapon once used to slay a demon in a single blow. It is a Talwar-type sword of immense size. Why can't I use it? Yggdrasil Mistletoe. A parasitic shrub feeding on the bark of the world tree. Upon sprouting, it shrivels and dies in half a day. Its leaves, if properly harvested, can be used to brew an elixir of eternal youth. Sounds good to me. I like it. Okay. And then Wonders, Eureka. Uh, we looked at that one. Pandemonium, the capital of the ancient Palamecian Empire. The towering mountain range encircling the city guarded it from even the most ambitious air airship captains. A warping device was the only means of bypassing this natural barrier. Yeah, that's accurate to uh, Final Fantasy II. Floating Castle. 
The Winged Ones possessed technology allowing them to transmute Cloudstone into crystals, like the ones that kept this castle aloft. Unfortunately, both the Winged Ones and their wondrous knowledge were lost in the Cataclysm. That, I believe, is a reference to Final Fantasy 1 and the, uh... Really high technological uh, floating castle that you got through, got to through the uh, Mirage Tower. Matoya's Cave. Court Thaumaturge Matoya once enjoyed the adoration of the ancient Runken peoples, but that ended with her creation of the Enthralled, a work of witchcraft to the lay eye. It was then she took up residence here. Uh, the Floating Continent. Theories once abounded as to what this mass of land might be. Academics have now settled on one prevailing theory. The cataclysm caused a shift in the balance of subterranean cloudstone, allowing it to surface. I'm not sure if you get these randomly or if you get specific ones with um, specific errands. Falgabard. This village is said to have been inhabited by an order of dark knights. Isn't that uh, Final Fantasy III, then, now that I'm thinking about it? While the fell blades of these knights lent them great power, they also cut short their lives. The Order's numbers dwindled, dwindled until at last none remained. The Chocobo Forest. Not but a glimpse of light creeps into this deep wood. Rare breeds of Chocobo thrive in this mystical forest, and the world tree is rumored to be at its center. The pungent scent of Chocobo fills the air. And feats passed. All right, uh, I want to get to a list that hopefully will tell me exactly what the names of some of these are. Uh, okay. Um, the Foundered Falcon, I believe. We were told of a sunken vessel known as the Falcon at the bottom of the West Burgro Bugro Sea. The Falcon was thought to have encountered a typhoon as it carried tributes from the continent, seeking the ship, sinking the ship and drowning her crew. Among those lost was Lord Hamilton, emissary to the walled city of Yardro. The job served to remind us all how dangerous sea travel can be. Well, we know that this is false because Hamilton died to Canopus back in Tactics Ogre. The Salvage of the Durga. We learned that the Durga, merchant ship owned by Barnvel Imports, had sunk 40 sectas into the Gulf of Karnan. As the Durga carried a number of valuable goods from the farthest corners of the continent, company representatives were, ar were understandably nervous. We raised the vessel, but her cargo had largely dissolved in the brine, resulting in a substantial loss for the company. Gledia Island Shoals Gledia Island lies 15 sectors into the inlet of Riovanas. Waters in the area are swift and shallow, making shipwrecks a common occurrence. However, as it is the closest route to the inlet, many merchants who know not of its treachery still venture near and are sunk. This was no doubt the case with the ship we raised as well. Uh, let's see... Uh, merchant ship. Another ship ran aground just off the coast of Gledia Island some 15 sectors out into the inlet of Riovanes. The ship was the Delphi, a large merchant vessel owned by East Gable Merchantry. As the ship was unregistered, we conducted a routine search and discovered a large quantity of illegal drugs being smuggled from the mainland. The cargo was worth some 70 million gil on the open market. Uh, a wish come true. I'll go in kind of the order that I have the list, just because that's easiest. A wish come true. The Brana clan has been defeated. The pirates had been plundering small fishing villages on the outskirts of town, taking hostages from each to keep others from calling for help. But thanks to the bravery of a ten-year-old girl named Fia, in a tiny fishing village near Riovana's castle, we were notified of the pir pirates' plot, and the Craven lot was brought to justice. Uh, we did also do this one, Cornelia's Rescue. Little Cornelia, Baron Catastrato's only daughter, was kidnapped by a man calling himself Jacques Le Rapour and demanding the ca Catastrato family jewels. We met the culprit on the pretense of delivering them. As it turned out, Jacques Le Rapour was actually a man by the name of Roberts, Cornelia's suitor. Cornelia had planned the kidnapping in an, an attempt to reunite her estranged parents. Huh. Interesting. Uh, the informant. I want. There we go. 
Our investigation revealed that there was indeed a spy in the Secret Society's ranks. Hecker and Maurer, a man of 1 in 40, had been hired by a rival group as a spy. Through his testimony, we learned the Society had been trafficking in endangered resplendent chocobo plumes. We searched their base, whereupon one of the smugglers confessed, helping us take down the entire syndicate. The Spoonie Bard. Uh, let's see... Oh, yep, yeah. Letter de Amour, the Spoonie Bard, that's the Edward one. It seems that the Bard Edward is in love with Anna, the golden voice of Argelis. Although their work rarely allows the two to meet, they have exchanged love letters for years. We discovered the sweet truth upon delivering the Bard's letter. Uh, let's see. Brave little Dorman. Dorman, a boy of seven who hated math, recently raised his hand to answer a question in math class during open house. We were able to witness a miracle for ourselves, recalling how the child struggled to answer even the simplest questions. When we began tutoring him, we could not help but smile, and we swelled with pride as he correctly answered the difficult question. Uh, Hilltop Estate. The Chimera, once thought extinct, had indeed reappeared. Such an abomination, a foul creation burying the features of countless beasts, could only have been wrought by the hand of man. It stands to reason that the Chimera was the work of dark sorcery, and rumor would place responsibility on one of the townspeople. We managed to fell the beast in a battle that spanned some eight hours. Wow. Uh, Pitiable Monster is uh, after that. We were called to assist in an unusual case of pet-turned-monster. The metamorphosis resulted from magics that the pet's owner, young Diara Luca, had found in an ancient tome in her family library. After disposing of the pet and questioning Diara, we learned that the chimera seen in town not long ago was also hers. We released her after eliciting a promise that she stop experimenting. Uh, easy come, easy go. Count Minimus, famed in Dorter for his yearly donations to the Red Wings, <laughs> found himself unable to open the door to his mansion. Wait, really? Huh. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Newly added solid gold fittings had rendered the door too heavy to open, but once again we couldn't help but think of the philanthropic Count as one of the few hopes for a corrupt society. I feel like that is responsing, response to... Uh, one of the other ones. Stuffed to the Gill. Count Minimus, famed for his yearly contributions to local daughter charities, could not open his family vault. Yeah, this is, uh... It seems I, either my fact is wrong, or you're getting incorrect ones from this. It seems that it had been stuffed full with bags of gill, jamming the opening mechanism. Although this reminded us of the lavish lifestyles that nobles led, we felt Count Minimus and his charity work a shining example in our corrupt society. And so we were happy to aid him. And then, uh, Criminal Count. Oops. Shoot. There's no way to jump down faster. Oh, come on. I'm so used to playing uh, Breath of Fire, which has the uh, selection and cancel buttons reversed now. There we go. Criminal Count. Count Minimus has been exposed. After defeating the door mimic, mimic, we performed a cursory search of the area, whereupon we were startled to discover a cache of gold and documents hidden in the Count's cellar. The nature of the documents would take too long to explain here, but suffice to say, they removed any chance of the Count winning the upcoming mayoral election. Kind of wish it would say a little bit more about that. Uh, we did Cornelia's Rescue. We did the Salvage of the Durga. Uh, the Mudman. We were asked by residents of Goog to defeat a monster living in an abandoned well. What we found at its dark, dank bottom was a figure in the shape of a man covered from head to toe in mud. It took all of our strength to defeat it. From its remains crawled a bedraggled vagrant. It seems that he had taken shelter in the well, only to be engulfed by the mud monster. 
uh, Amidst the Mist. Mount Vector is a mysterious place where rain falls continuously. The soft rain was quite relaxing and served to soothe our battle-weary bones. The high temperatures in the region meant that the mountain is always swathed in mist, leading to stories of white demons that prey on travelers. We located the ruins and bid this oasis for the soul a reluctant farewell before continuing on our journey. Uh, next up, Ode to Joy. That is the response to the Spoony Bard. Anna, the renowned singer, is to be married. After seven years of long-distance romance, a date is finally set. The lucky man is none other than Edward, a bard employed at Riovanes. Edward's gentlemanly manner has caused many to suspect he may be a prince in disguise, mayhap of continental royalty. This charm is no doubt what attracted Anna to him. We wish the two of them every happiness. Hey, she's not dead in this uh, reality. Congratulations, Anna. Whisperweed Blossom. The labyrinthine cave on the outskirts of Wargelis led to a vast underground lake. We sensed we were being watched as we stared across the water, and turned to see a pack of red mooses ready to pounce. After overcoming our foes, we saw an astonishing sight. The blossom of a whisperweed, a plant that blooms only once in several millennia. Could the monsters have been protecting it? The Blackjack. Uh, where are you, Blackjack? There it is. The Blackjack, a casino ship equipped with slot machines and all manner of card games docked in Wargelis Bay. Gambling is strictly regulated by the city, but the owner of the ship, a man of seven and twenty named Setzer, uh -huh, uh -huh, claims that he was merely trying to bring a little enjoyment to the, into the drab lives of the townspeople. Coal Miner's Holiday. The Ducatia Mine has put out a request for miners. A, this generally occurs only when new veins of ore are discovered, and since no new ore has been found in this mine since the discovery of a copper vein several years ago, this would indeed be good news. But since the copper miners are still employed, some suspect this urgent need for extra miners can only mean gold has been discovered. Minor Difficulties Ducatia Mine was again recruiting miners. As only days had passed since the first recruitment drive, we decided to look into the situation. Upon being hired, we were subjected to an even stricter examination before finally being allowed into the mine itself. Once inside, we confirmed that a gold vein had indeed been discovered and was being mined in secret. Uh, the Desert Explorer. I think that's down here I saw. Yep. Lamson the Adventurer hailed from the main continent, coming to Ivalice by way of Romanda. He was an explorer of some renown on the mainland and made a number of important discoveries there. We joined his party and set off, exploring the unfamiliar Zeklos Desert. I mean, you know, unfamiliar other than the fact that we've gone through it a bunch of times. Thanks in part to his experience, we located the ruins. Frontier Expedition. We took part in a frontier expedition. Such expeditions are popular for the prospect of discovering lost wonders gives hope to those exhausted by the mundanity of everyday life. As a surprising number of people attended, we divided ourselves into groups of ten and set off exploring at dawn. We forged deep into the jungle, where we found remnants of an ancient, advanced civilization. Uh, the Foundered Falcon? I believe we've read that one, but, uh... Yeah, we did. Alright. Uh, there and back again. Uh, we looked at this one already, right? Yes. Past glory. Uh, yep, yeah, read that one already. Son of a sandworm. 
The Beta Waste Sand Waste crawls with monsters. We were warned of this on the very day we set off in search of the Lost Ruins. A monster known as a sandworm is said to appear at the end of each month, bringing blackened skies and sandstorms that shut, off desert, shut the desert off from the outside world. Is this an attempt to protect the ruins' legacy or a message to humans who dare defile rem remnants of the past? Well, it's a good thing that we went on five Sagittarius then. Although that might be the day it came back, I don't know. Uh, the Vascons. The Vascons are an unusual group of adventurers, exploring regions previously untouched by man, and then reaching others, and then teaching others about them. As their notoriety has grown, so have their numbers. But the captain's natural leadership ability allows her to easily coordinate their efforts. She recorded every step of our journey from beginning to successful discovery. We look forward to reading it later. Honest Icky. We headed off to investigate the farmer's tale. The mountain was beautiful, bathed in mist like something out of a fairy tale. Yet even in that seemingly untouched wilderness, the effects of the war were evident. We will not tell you what we saw there. It is best seen for oneself. We left with mixed emotions, knowing that even this hidden bit of paradise would eventually disappear. Yeah, that kind of leads me to believe that uh, what you discover is random. Or at least semi-random. Um... Okay, it looks like I my list is now in... Yep, all right, all right, so, um, that is all of the, uh, all of those events. Uh, we do have some new events here that we have not read, um, if I can remember where it was that, uh... Did that. I'm pretty sure we did that. The Heretic's Brand we did. Elder's Confession. Belias the Gigas. Velia and Delita. By the will of Duke Goltana, Ovelia was enthroned as queen at Zeltania Castle, but discovering the truth of her origins had wounded her deeply. Delita came to console the new queen, offering to build her a new kingdom, and promising her a life where she would have no more need of tears. These comforting words in her time of despair helped Ovelia to start building a bond of trust with Delita. The Thunder God's Son. Orin and I crossed paths once again in the rain-sodden Grogue Heights. I discovered that he was the adopted son of Count Orlando, Lord Commander of the Order of the Southern Sky. Orin, too, was aware of the High Confessor's search for the stones and his scheme to foment discontent on both sides of the conflict. Rafa. After rescuing a young girl named Rafa in Yardro, I was told of Grand Duke Barrington, Liege Lord of Fobelham, and his sinister plot to use the chaos of the war to obtain the throne of Ivelisse for himself. The girl's brother, Marek, however, remained loyal to the Grand Duke and threatened to take Alma's life unless we both went to Riovanes. The Grand Duke's ambitions. Grand Duke Barrington had invited Knights of the Templarate to Riovanes in hopes of striking a deal with them. The Grand Duke had seized the Taurus and Scorpio stones from Sir Isolude, and was attempting to use them, along with his knowledge of the location of the scriptures of Germanic, to acquire the full backing of the church. However, Lord Fulmarv refused to comply, angered by the Grand Duke's presumption. Alma's escape. Alma sat alone in the dungeon of Riovana's castle, no doubt wondering when I would come to rescue her. The dungeon's eerie quiet was shattered suddenly by a shriek of pain. Alma staggered backwards as a Riovanesian knight fell before her and, after a few fearful words, breathed his last. Alma prayed for his soul's repose, and then padded cautiously through the open door. Tragedy's Mark In shock from the horror of the events that had unfolded, Alma discovered Knight Templar Isolude in the Grand Duke's parlor. He entrusted her with the Pisces Stone before falling into an eternal sleep. Lord Fulmarv then appeared, but as he approached Alma, the Virgo Stone began to shine brightly. Intrigued, he took the struggling Alma away, from, away with him. A Different Power Marak had taken Grand Duke Barrington's bullet to save his sister's life. As a tearful Rafa cradled his body, the Scorpio stone upon her chest began to glow. At this, I recalled the horrible es episode of transmigration with Wygraf, and a dreadful feeling consumed my thoughts that a Lukavi might appear at any moment. But no demon was summoned by the stone's light. Instead, Marak's soul was restored to him. A pure heart. I searched desperately for Alma, but she was nowhere to be found at Riovanez. All that remained in the castle's ravaged parlor was the Pisces Stone. 
Marek remarked that the stone's power depended on the nature of its user, but as I clasped the stone tightly in my hands, all I could think of was Alma. The war had begun to take a new direction. Chaos flared throughout Ivelisse. In the shadows, while grasping for clues as to Alma's whereabouts, Marek mentioned the name of Lord Fulmarv, Lord Commander of the Knights Templar. It seemed that even High Confessor Marcel had, and his vile ambitions were being used by him. In order to uncover the, the truth about Lord Fulmarv and his aims, I thought it wise to visit my former friend and confidant, Delita, in Zeltenia. Keeper of the Stone Orin welcomed court Count Orlando back to Zeltenia Castle, whereupon the young astrologer reported to him the peculiar string of events happening throughout Ivelisse, all revolving around the stones. He then spoke candidly of the church and the Knights Templar, and their suspicious tendencies of late. Count Orlando pulled the Libra Stone from his pocket and gazed into it, overcome by foreboding at the battle that must soon come. A Common Chord As Delita mourned the loss of his sister Titra, he heard Ovelia whistling with a blade of grass. They smiled at one another, discovering a most unlikely commonality between them. Delita spoke of his beloved sister's death and swore to protect Ovelia from a similar fate. Stampede we chanced upon a young man being attacked by a group of monsters in the Zeklos Desert. Just as they surrounded him, we came to his rescue. Oh, these must be just appended to the end. The Hunter, a young man we saved, was a game hunter by the name of Luso. He decided to accompany us until he could be reunited with his fellow hunters. The Metallic Sphere. Basrudio Bonanza, machinist and father to young Mustadio, uncovered a peculiar metal sphere from within Tunnel 57, far beneath the city of Goo. None of us had even a slight familiarity with its structure or use, but for some reason it reacted to the stone in my possession. The symbol of Aquarius was engraved upon its surface. Gift of the Magi It was Lady Agrius' birthday, although she had forgotten the significance of the day. Young Mustadio had prepared a special present in anticipation, However, he had been eagerly awaiting the day for more than a month. And lastly... Oh god, there's even more. Let's see, did we ever look at his name? It's kind of fun never knowing what lies ahead. Uh, if you say so. Neither mantra deal neither nether mantra deals great damage to those of little faith. Believe and you shall be saved. You don't have much faith. Faith offers no shield against sky mantra, for words are treacherous things. You say anything different? Guns require no charge time, simply aim and fire. Nope. Our lives are as fleeting as a dream. What a somber thought. Be aware of your unit's turn order at all times, such as the swiftest path, path to victory. All right, so uh, that's it for uh, this episode, this interlude episode. When we come back, I will have gotten my way all the way back up to Fenneth Creek. Probably not going to grind, although it's really late, so I don't think I will. Uh, I'll probably wait until later. Anyway, that's it for this episode. See you next time, everyone.